Hello, here's the answer key for the 4.1 to 4.3 quiz. All right. So the first three questions deal with balancing. So we have this equation right here. It says uh, when the equation above is balanced and all the coefficients are reduced to their lowest whole number terms, the coefficient for O2 is. Okay, so let me go over to my little worksheet here. So here's that same equation. So this is a type of uh, combustion reaction because you have O2 right here. Um, so you want to balance oxygen last, all right? So if we just go through and balance all the other, other, other elements first. So you have 10 carbons right here. So you just have that single carbon and CO2. So we want to put a, a coefficient 10 right there. All right, and then we go to hydrogen right here. There's 12 hydrogens on the reactant side. Uh, you just have H2O on the right side. So there's two hydrogens. So we have to multiply that by six. Okay, and then there's a, a sulfur mixed in right there. So we have just one of those, and there's one sulfur in SO2. So we want to leave that alone. Um, so we, they're, they're equal already. All right, so now we have to make the oxygens equal. So we have oxygen in each of the, in each of the products here. So we just have to add those together. So there'd be uh, 20 oxygens in the CO2. There'd be the two right here from the SO2, so that's 22. And then there's another six from the, the oxygens in the waters. So that's a total of 28. Uh, but then there's four oxygens in this compound right here. So out of those 28, then we need 24 more oxygens from the O2. So then we have to put a 12 right there. Okay, so we go back uh, 12, letter C. That's our choice. Okay. All right, now we go to number two. Um, on this another balancing problem. So we're looking for the coefficient of H3PO4, this one right here. So going back to my sheet, um, here's that same compound, all right? Now when you have something like this, I always look for polyatomic ions um, as a starting point. Um, we have PO4 on the reactant side, but we don't really have PO4 on the, on the product side. It's part of this polyatomic ion so um, you just kind of want to go through and um, make all the atoms equal, all right? So then I would look at, um, you know, you want to save oxygen for last because, again, it's in every, every compound here. So I would look for things that only show up in one place. So you have calcium. There's three right here. There's just a single calcium right there. So we have to have a coefficient of three in front. Okay, and then... Um, we look at the number of, of phosphorus right here. There's It's in the parentheses with a two, so there's two right there. Then you multiply by the coefficient three, so that's a total of, of six phosphorus. Um, we have two right here, so we need four more. So if we put a coefficient four right there, that gives us six phosphorus on each side. And then you also compare the, the hydrogens. Now we have 12 hydrogens right here. Uh, we have 2 times 2, so that's a total of 4, times 3, so that's 12, so the hydrogens are equal. And then the oxygens, if we add those up, there's 8 oxygens here. Uh, there's another 16, 4 times 4 here, so 8 and 16, that adds up to 24. And then we compare that to the right side, you got 4 times 2, so that's 8, and then 8 times the coefficient 3, so that's 24. So everything is equal. So we were looking for H3PO4, so that is a coefficient of 4. So going back to our answer, uh, letter D is our correct choice. Okay. Another balancing problem. Um, so we're looking for the number of H2O, the number of waters that we need. All right, so going back to the, the worksheet here. Scroll down just a bit. Okay, so... Again, you, you want to go from the, the most complex to simple. So I would look for um, polyatomic ions that show up on both sides and treat them as a single unit. Now, here's a CO3 right here. That's a carbonate. That's a polyatomic ion. But we don't have CO3 on the right side, so we can't use that. But here we have SO4. That's sulfate. And we have SO4 sulfate right there. So we can treat that as a single unit. And there's one on each side, so we want to leave those two alone, okay? All right, and then you want to go, um, once you get the polyatomics equal, then you just want to go 
one element at a time until you get them done. Now, usually you want to save oxygen for the last to be fixed and hydrogen for second to be la second last to be fixed. So you want to fix the other elements first. Um, if you try to do oxygen first, you would drive yourself crazy because there's oxygen in every compound right here. So it would be very tough to balance just by looking at oxygen. So look for just single elements that only show up in one place, like lithium. There's two lithiums right here. There's one right here. So this needs a coefficient too. And then I would go to carbon next. Uh, now that we put that two right here, now you have two carbons on the reactant side. Uh, on the right side, you just have that single carbon and CO2. So that needs a coefficient too. Um, and then I would look at, so we got lithium is equal. We have carbon is equal. Uh, we have the sulfates are equal. Now I would go to hydrogen. So you have two hydrogens here and another two right there. So that's a total of four. So the only place we have hydrogen on the right side is in the waters. So I would put a two to give us four hydrogens. And then with everything else being equal, the oxygens have to be equal too. We can just confirm that there's two times three, there's six oxygens here, plus another four, so that's a total of 10. And here we have um, four plus the two from the waters, plus another four in the CO2. So you have 10 oxygens on each side. So the coefficient we need for H2O is two, which is right there, letter B. Okay, the last three deal with net ionic equations. So on this one, we have the addition of sulfurous acid, that's a weak acid, to barium hydroxide, that's a strong base, results in the formation of a precipitate. Okay, so um, according to the solubility rules, um, weak acids will stay together as a molecule, and strong bases and also strong acids will break apart into ions, all right? So this will allow us to kind of uh, without writing out the whole equation, we can just eliminate a few things. We're looking for the acid that is staying together and this barium hydroxide that is broken apart into ions. So that's going to eliminate um, letter A, uh, letter C, because the acid is separated here. We need the acid to stay together. Um, and it's going to eliminate letter E. Okay, Letter E is actually the, the molecular equation. So that reduces it down to either B or D. So we have the weak acid together, and we have the strong base separated into ions. Okay. Now the next part, we know we have a precipitate. So we know that there has to be a solid that's being formed. So between letter B and D, there's a solid that's formed in letter B. We don't have any solid that's being formed in letter D. So that by process of elimination, we know it has to be B. Question five, which of the following is a net ionic equation for the reaction between aqueous sodium fluoride and hydrochloric acid? Okay, so net ionic, that means that sodium fluoride is gonna be soluble, so that would break apart into ions. Hydrochloric acid is a strong acid, so that would also break apart. Okay, so anything that shows them together, we can eliminate, so that gets rid of A, all right? This is actually the, the molecular equation, letter A, okay? And then um, on the product side, the, the possibilities of, of different compounds would be NaCl, and that's gonna be aqueous, so that would separate into ions, and then HF, which would be a weak acid, so that would stay together. So this NaCl would break apart. So these would be spectator ions, and HF would be our only product, so it has to be letter D, okay? Because we eliminate sodium and we eliminate chloride as our spectator ions, so letter D. And the last one, um, this is like the reaction that was in the lab. Um, lead 2 nitrate and potassium bromide are combined to form lead 2 bromide as a yellow precipitate. So in a precipitation reaction, um, we're looking for the net ionic equation, by the way. Um, in a precipitation reaction, the net ionic equation is going to be the ions on the reactant side and the precipitate as a solid on the product side. So that's going to be letter A right there. Okay, It's always going to be the solid 
and the ions that produce a solid in a precipitation reaction, right? Uh, letter D, that's the molecular equation. That's what that one looks like right there, okay? This letter C is the complete ionic equation, uh, So, but net ionic is letter A. That's our correct answer, all right? And that's all for that quiz. Have a good day.